and welcome to the show. Great to be with you. Thanks for tuning in today. You are listening to Let's Talk Nutrition. We're coast to coast and we're global. And the global part comes in through the streaming. And uh, we'll have a little bit up of an update on that. It's kind of interesting. You'll see. Hope you're having a good day wherever and however you may be listening or, the, or watching the show. And whatever you may be doing. And uh, we're on the air every day, Monday through Friday. Nine o- it goes on the air. Nine- we go on 9.06 a.m. Eastern Time. Round numbers 9 to 11. I suspect we could do three hours. Um, I know we could. <laughs> we have more content than we have uh, time. That's for sure. The uh, container is big, so it takes a lot of content. But we have it. And... Um, Always trying to talk about things that can make a difference. Sometimes we sometimes we get a little esoteric, um, get into the theory of things, uh, but there's a intimate relationship between theory and practice. Nothing more practical than a good theory. Nothing more theoretical than good practice. So said Kurt Lewin. And. Uh, Given the way I've been trained, you'll, I, I'll drift into that realm. Because uh, we have to have explanation. We need explanations as to why things are the way they are, why they work the way they do. And that's what theories do. They answer the question, why? But before you even get there, you have to, have, you have, to, you have to deal with the question of what. What is it? In other words, what, what is that thing? <laughs> Description. Explanation to prediction. That's what science is trying to do. Description, explanation, prediction. That's the sequence. And we're trying to get these theories and these uh, descriptions so that we can predict how a particular compound will work in your body how a particular diet may affect you, how a particular therapy of one sort or another will, will serve a person or not. What are the side effects of certain therapies? You know, we need to be able to predict these things. And it's not a, it, it, and it's all on prob, it's probability. It's all probability. There, there is no certainty here. There's no 100%. With absolute certainty, we can say, well, we can, we're going to die, that's for sure. And pay taxes. <laughs> and, and those two things are going to happen in, invariably, for sure. But, there may, we, but we don't know what the future is, so you can't say with certainty that it will always be that way. That's why we never, around here, you'll, I'm very careful. You'll never hear me say we have proved something. We have proved. The theory has been proved. No, it hasn't. It's only been confirmed or disconfirmed. That's all. That's the best we can do because we don't know what tomorrow is. And we, and we predict with a certain degree of probability. And hopefully the confidence is high. So this is an evident. This is all by way of saying this is an evidence-based show. Now, is science perfect? No. I report on many studies that are flawed, and I'll tell you about those. There's problems with their method, with the methods and the procedures that they used. Sometimes um, unintentionally, and sometimes by design. Statistical models or procedures will be selected that will generate. A certain outcome, hmm. and you and scientists are humans. They make mistakes, and they can get corrupted, too. And seen out the cigarette study. Exact. Well, there are many examples. That's right. We for years we uh, we couldn't say smoking causes cancer. Because there were studies that were coming out that, that were only that showed maybe a correlation but not causation, and the cigarette companies, tobacco companies, had their own scientists generating their own data. 
from studies that conflicted with other studies. So it was a lot of back and forth, but now we can say with a high degree of probability that smoking causes cancer. And so do, so do a lot of other things. So this is, all again, all by way of saying we're evidence-based. A little harder to do that kind of show. Um, you know, it keeps you, it keeps you within the guardrails of things. You can't run off the road here. Um, a lot of people listen and watch the show, and there's a, a sense of responsibility to try and convey what, <clears throat> what seems to be true. Not true with a capital T, but a small t. I don't know what the absolute truth is. I don't have that kind of ability. So we always invite you to join in the conversation. So in a moment, I'll give you an example of how there can be conflict between even good things, different, different things, different outcomes associated, for example, with different ways of eating, both of which are considered healthy. And both have different effects. Kind of interesting. I'll explain. Here's how you can join the conversation. You can reach us at 877-897-8255. That's 877-897-8255. Or you can email Dr. Garko, Dr. Garko at Let's Talk Nutrition.com. Follow us on Facebook at Let's Talk Nutrition. Or subscribe to our YouTube channel at Let's Talk Nutrition. And that's... That's everything that's archived and closed captioned. And if you go to Let's Talk Nutrition.com, you can actually watch the show and see well, all the archives in your articles. So. A- absolutely. And we've, been, um, we've kept the site open, the website open. It's been under construction, been updating, revising, revamping, reissuing, whatever, uh, the articles that I've written. Uh, and you will find, you know, there, there are scores of them there. That goes back to what you were talking about with, uh, you know, new new technology, new studies, and everything, and you have to revamp those articles. Absolutely, and it takes time. I've been pulling my hair out for the last week now on three articles. I'm trying to update, get them onto the website, and it's been really a task, nevertheless. Um, on our stream, Gary is telling you how to connect to the show. One way, of course, is you can watch this show on a, some sort of handheld device, your tablet, your computer, whatever. I've been saying lately, we've, we've appeared now on six continents. And the only continent that we could not find uh, someone who has watched the show, even one person, was Antarctica. That's understandable. However, Gary has some breaking news. I have a friend that has traveled down to uh, Antarctica. He's actually in um, Argentina right now, and he went to Antarctica. And the other day, I'm like, "When you get to Antarctica, watch the show." I said, "I don't care if it's for like a minute for about so for about 15 minutes." He watched the show uh, in Antarctica. So now we have him, Dan McDonald, and uh, about 300 penguins. So <laughs> but he did. He was he uh, responded back and he watched the show. So it's, I'm really excited about it. All right. So technically, we've appeared on. <laughs> we've had someone watch this show on all seven continents. That's pretty cool, man. We're digging that. We need I'll to work get, on a space next. Yeah. Get in touch with uh, Elon Musk. Have him send up a little uh, broadcast of the show. We're gonna bring. We're gonna bring MySpace back. That's where. That's our. <laughs> He's pretty cool. He's that was Stephen's voice, uh, Stephen Armstrong, the other producer for the show. Um, he's pretty cool, Stephen. That guy is pretty cool, man. Mm-hmm. Smart. He's very wealthy. <laughs> Got a rocket ship company. <laughs> I, now, what do you do for them? I I put up rockets in space. <laughs> I, I do have a question from a listener, and that is uh, from Lewis and Wesley Chapel. And when do the side effects outweigh the benefits of a medication? When should you? I'll answer that question when we come back. Let's talk nutrition coast to coast and globally. The perfect complement to your beauty regimen? Try Form Essentials Zinnia. The finest of its kind, Zinnia offers twice as much biotin as other formulas, which has proven to unlock the vibrancy and even the dullest of hair, skin, and nails. 
Zinnia breaks through and rejuvenates cells internally, helping you achieve the allure of effortless beauty. Reviving your hair, skin, and nails has never been easier. This essential blend of biotin, alpha-lipoic, and hyaluronic acid, collagen, and vitamin C creates lasting enhancements to your natural good looks. Don't go on wondering. You're worth the results. This combination of ingredients can only be found in Zinnia. Pamper yourself with a proven bit of affordable luxury and start looking your best. Ask for Zinnia by name at your nearest vitamin retailer to begin your journey to restored nails, head-turning hair, and radiant skin today. For more information, visit formessentials.com. When your alarm goes off, do you jump out of bed with excitement? Or does it take multiple alarms, a few snooze buttons, or a morning caffeine fix to get you going? These habits and daily stress cause a vicious cycle in which sleep becomes increasingly elusive. In fact, 54% of Americans report struggles to fall or stay asleep. For a better night's rest, look no further than Solace, an all-natural dietary supplement that supports healthy sleep and relaxation so you get the rest you need to wake up clear-eyed, alert, and ready for the day. Solace has given thousands a better night's rest and the power to take back their mornings while enjoying the day ahead of them. Solace is formulated with non-addictive, scientifically proven, all-natural ingredients that support sleep and relaxation, such as melatonin, tryptophan, and 5-HTP. For more information or to order Solace, visit TakeSolace.com. Solace, for healthy sleep naturally. There are two ways of eating that have uh, received a lot of attention over the years uh, and still do. One is veg a vegetarian model or paradigm, the vegetarian, and then the Mediterranean. And each um, has its own merits and research surrounding them. Uh, a, there's a story trending this morning about how a vegetarian or Mediterranean diet, how both of those ways of eating benefit heart health it's interesting that this particular study showed different effects we'll get to that in a second 
But we had a question from somebody, right, Gary? Yeah, Lewis and Wesley Chapel. And what was the question again? He is a 35-year-old male who's taking a blood pressure medicine that's giving him headaches. Mm -hmm. And his question was, is when do the side effects outweigh the benefits? And what should he do? Oh, when do the benefits outweigh the side effects? Um, with blood pressure, blood pressure medication is tricky business. Ask a cardiologist. She'll tell you. Um, my mom had that experience. By the way, my mother was diagnosed uh, with high blood pressure in her 40s. She lived to be 92, but she took her meds every day. She did other things, diet, and lived a long, long time. There's, I could tell you more about that, but my point is this. Uh, with Lewis, he needs to go and see immediately. See his, He should not stop taking his medication. He first needs to make an appointment and go see his cardiologist ASAP. There's something about that medication. Now, I, know, I don't know if he's taking other medications. Sometimes you have interaction effects uh, with medications. Um, sometimes uh, a person will be taking more than one blood pressure medication at a time, as many as two or three, believe it or not. So that's the first step he has to do. And when do the, when do the benefits outweigh the side effects? Or, you know, with, all, with medications, there's always side effects. Uh, and... When 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 the uh, when do the side effects get to a point where they're outweighing the benefits? And the point you don't want to reach is when the side effects lead to your demise or threaten your life. So that's why you need if you know you need to really consult with your physician and do not stop taking a medication or don't start taking a medication unless you talk with your doctor. It's very important to do that. He first has to do that. Um, if he's having headaches, there's something, you know, something's not right with that medication for him. Now, I don't have a history on him. I don't know what his issues are. You know, um, 35, he's awfully young to have high blood pressure. So if I had to guess, it's either congenital, there's some, he was born with some issue, or he's overweight, um, leading a sedentary lifestyle. It could be all of those factors. I don't know. But he's, he's young to have high blood pressure. It's not uncommon. It's I mean, not all that uncommon. But I'm not surprised. But that would be my best advice. And that's the best thing to do. Consult with his immediately. Not next week. Not next month. Make call today. You tell him I said call today. His cardiologist, make an appointment and get in there or call. call they Sometimes over the phone, you can, the doctor will talk to you over the phone and maybe the doctor can write a different script. Is he, I wonder if he measures his blood pressure every day. He can get a cuff and start measuring his own blood pressure every day. Do you? Because, I mean, if I have one. Heart, I, have, yeah. I have one. I don't have high blood pressure, but I... I have one at home just as a matter of routine. <clears throat> you can get one. They're pretty accurate, too. In fact, the one I use is the one I, they were using in the clinic when I was going to the clinic. All right. Vegetarian versus... Uh, if, I hope that helps him. I, I mean, I can't... The, when do the benefits... When do the side effects outweigh the benefits? When they put your health in jeopardy, Lewis. That's when the side effects outweigh the benefits. When they put your health in jeopardy or your life. Mm. People die from medications by the thousands every year. Every year. I don't know the exact number. It's a big number. Medications are complicated, complicated things. And that's, when the, that's the best answer. When the uh, side effects outweigh the benefits when they put your health in jeopardy. Then you can, he needs to call today. Not tomorrow, today. Headaches with high blood pressure medication, not a good sign. So uh, the findings of an Italian clinical trial, it's reported, seem to suggest that a low-calorie vegetarian diet 
and I'm quoting, may be as effective at reducing cardiovascular risk as a low-calorie Mediterranean diet, close quote. Um, this study was published in a journal published by the American Heart Association. The journal is appropriately called Circulation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll get your blood pumping. Yeah, exactly. And um, this is an interesting kind of uh, comparison. I haven't seen this comparison before. Mediterranean diet is not a vegetarian diet because the Mediterranean diet allows for meat. By the way, Gary, I saw a commercial, I swear to you, I, I can't remember the company or the fast food, whatever it is. Meet with your meat. I swear to God. I, we joke around. Do you, are you a person that eats meat with your meat? Well, you should th rethink that. There's a commercial running where they're, they're talking about serving up meat with your meat. I'm not making it up. So the Mediterranean diet does allow for fish and chicken and moder a moderate amount of meat. And I want to clear something up about this so-called Mediterranean diet, too, by the way. We'll be right back. Energy, energy. Almost 52% of men experience erectile dysfunction and benign prostatic hyperplasia. If you've had challenges with virility, sexual health, or low energy, Body Vigor's Alpha Extension may be the answer for you. Body Vigor's Alpha Extension can help revitalize your alpha male and extend your love. Our formula is one of the highest quality nutraceuticals available, formulated to support the processes involved in promoting a healthy male sex drive, energy, and stamina. Alpha Extension has two powerful herbal blends, Virilla Max, which focuses on male sexual health, and T-Pump Activator, which helps balance your testosterone levels. Revitalize your alpha male with Body Vigor's Alpha Extension, exclusively available on Amazon.com.
So which diet is better for cardiovascular health? A vegetarian diet or a Mediterranean one? What do you think? I'll tell you what Dr. Esselstyn would say in a moment. So the Mediterranean diet, and there, and that's what I grew up on, given my mom was an immigrant from Italy, and that's what I ate uh, my whole life, for the most part, a Mediterranean style of diet. It served me well, um, but I don't eat that way anymore now, and I'll explain too. It's widely reported as being one of the healthiest paradigms, nutritional paradigms, dietary paradigms, and it does have merit, no doubt about it, for preventing cardiovascular disease. Whereas the vegetarian diet, they say in this article, is well less studied. I don't know if that's true. I don't necessarily agree with that. And especially, they, they point out, with respect, or with respect to health, heart healthy alt, as a health, heart healthy alternative to people. Now, the Mediterranean diet is not about just olive oil here. The Mediterranean diet is a comprehensive model that includes carbohydrate, fat, and protein. It also turns out that it's also that diet is associated with a particular way of living. And when you look at the, at the countries in the Mediterranean basin that are considered, you know, consumers of the Mediterranean way of eating, they're living also in a certain way that contributes to their health. And people think it's just about the olive oil and the wine. Dr. Esselstyn would say, Nick say, on both. For, cardio, for, for heart, patients who have heart disease. And he's not necessarily a big fan of the vegetarian diet either because it's so, so uh, populated with processed foods these days. Dr. Esselstyn, cardiac surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic, go to dresselstyn.com. He's going to tell you a whole food, plant-based diet, no meat, no dairy, no oil, and you have to keep the cholesterol below 150 milligrams per deciliter. And in his research, and he's right, in those countries where the, generally in the population where the, the cholesterol is below 100, 150 and below, you, can't, you have less heart disease. In fact, you can start to reverse heart disease. And in his own research, he has found that a very low-fat diet, <clears throat> no meat, a whole food, plant-based diet, no meat, no dairy, no oil, along with medication, can reverse heart disease. And he's done it, and he's doing it now. And he's been doing it since the 80s. And people, and, and olive oil is fine, I guess, but it's still oil. And if you have heart disease, probably don't want to go there. I hate to tell you that. And what he has found is that when patients stick to his way of eating, along with, the, if, if necessary, medication, and keep their cholesterol be below 150, like in the 130, 140 range, they were sent home to die, don't, do, don't die right away they live they turn out to, to have many more years of life those who start to cheat again don't fare very well when they start adding oil back in and go back to a higher fat diet so so i'm just saying all of you who think that you know cholesterol is not an issue i'm sorry it is yesterday i was at a convenience store over in um my part of the woods and there was a gentleman who had a wristband on from a hospital. Mm -hmm. And the guy behind him goes, oh, were you at such and such hospital? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, what were you there for? He goes, triple bypass surgery. And he goes, oh, and he goes, you just get out? He goes, yeah. He goes, earlier this morning. And I, and the gentleman that was just got out of the hospital, you know what he was buying? A 12-pack of beer and two packs of cigarettes. And I just, I'm sitting there shaking my head. He had triple bypass surgery. And smoking and drinking. Smoking and drinking. Both of which contribute to heart disease because they damage the endothelium. Now, you may wonder, why is he doing that? 
Yeah, that was that was my next. Why question. is he why? why is he doing that? He should know better. You would think that he got, you know, the bedevil sca- scared out of him. I was going to say something else, uh, and that he would, you know, be enlightened. Right. Mm-mm. Doesn't work that way. This is more complicated than that. Um. He's a, he probably has done that for decades. Does it not register like, hey, this is killing you? Or is it the, the mentality of the ah. habit? The habit is so strong. The desire is so strong. The ritualization of his life around smoking and drinking is so pervasive and ingrained that he can't, without help, he's going to have a hard time changing those behaviors. And his life being threatened, how old of a man would you make him to be? 50s, 60s? Yeah, in his 50s. 50s. He could live another 30 years if he wanted, or more. If he wanted to, he's not going to make it. I, that would be my prediction. He's smoking. He just had triple bypass. Triple bypass. Just got released from the hospital, is in the convenience store buying a six-pack of beer and two packs of cigarettes. Yeah. The very thing that got him there in the first place. That's That's how strong... Those habituated behaviors are. I wonder if anybody else has seen something like that. A lot. You got people listening, watching this show right now. They have a, a close relative or a loved one or a partner who's doing this very thing. Just shake their head at them, going, "What are you thinking?" Yeah, Bob, you just got home from the hospital. Don't bother me. I'm going out to the garage and smoke. And you can't judge them because, and it's not just about willpower. You say, "Well." They don't have any willpower, really. It's if, if that were only the issue, it's m- far more complicated. Far more complicated. And doctors don't have the time, nor are they trained, to deal with all of that behavioral modification that needs to go on, cognitive behavioral therapy that needs to happen. They don't have time for that. They got patients waiting in the waiting room. It's complicated. I'll come back. I'll put a. I'll tell you about these. This vegetarian and Mediterranean, which is better for cardiovascular health. Doctor Esselstyn would say neither. If I had to guess, he would say eat the way, you know what I just said: whole food, plant based diet, no meat, no dairy, no oil, no oil. And I've seen I've seen videotapes of his lectures where he gets pretty animated. And he'll say, no oil. And he does it in a humorous way because he knows it drives people crazy. (laughs) And he says, if you think pouring olive oil on your salad is going to make that salad more healthy, you're mistaken. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we can't have any fun. Whether you spend your free time on a treadmill, under a car, or in your garden, if your active lifestyle leaves you sore, Body Vigor's Inflammaforce may be exactly what you need. Inflammaforce has a natural herb blend that acts as an anti-inflammatory to help maintain healthy joint and mobility support. There are standardized herbs like white willow, boswellia, turmeric, ginger, and devil's claw. The vegetarian capsule promotes easy digestion and a fast-acting dissolve process. Inflammaforce includes a proprietary enzyme herbal blend full of antioxidants and flavonoids that target pain and inflammation throughout the body. Body Vigor's Inflammaforce contains ingredients that support normal, healthy joint flexibility and function, builds healthy tissue, and helps with your recovery process. So if you're tired of sore joints and inflamed muscles, Body Vigor's Inflammaforce is your answer. Purchase Inflammaforce exclusively on Amazon.com.
They're taking a look at the Mediterranean diet versus a vegetarian diet and which one's better for cardiovascular health. Well, it turns out that each has confers certain benefits, but each seems to be lacking in one way or another. That's interesting. Uh, this study was... Um, the lead author is uh, Francesco Sofi, a professor of clinical nutrition at the University of Florence. Um, and he said, to best evaluate this issue, we decided to compare a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet with a Mediterranean diet in the same group of people. Okay. What does lacto-ovo mean? Well, lacto deal with dairy, ovo, eggs. Mm. Okay. Look at that. I just learned that. So they had 107 people in the study uh, to follow either a low vegetarian diet or a low calorie Mediterranean diet for three months, 90 days. And they, uh, the people in the study were somewhere between the ages of 18 and 75. All were healthy, but overweight. All were healthy and all were overweight. That's an oxymoron? Well... <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what they said. Uh, it was a crossover trial. What that means is, in the language of research, that at the end of three months, one on one diet, the, they had the same participants switch over, cross over to do the other diet, the Mediterranean or the vegetarian, depending on which one they did first. All these people had attended counseling sessions where they received advice about the diet they were about to start. And they got a detailed menu plan for a week of one meal of meals, um, information about the foods to include or exclude. They had a lot of guidance here, all right, more than most people get. Both of the diets were designed to be low calorie and match the energy needs of the people in the study. Uh, in both diets, around 50 to 55% of the calories were derived from carbohydrate. 15 to 20 percent from protein, 25 to 30 percent from fat. There were no substantial differences between the two diets and the number of servings per week of olive oil, fruits, nut, vegetables, cereals, potatoes, and sweets. All right. Now, the unsurprisingly, they said, the groups reported eating more legumes, eggs, nuts, and dairy foods when they were on the, on the vegetarian diet than when they were on the Mediterranean diet. An lacto-ovo uh, lacto vegetarian, you're allowed to eat eggs and dairy. So it, that's kind of interesting to me. The vegetarian diet, they ate more beans, eggs, nuts, and dairy foods when when they were on the vegetarian way of eating compared to the Mediterranean. The results also show that both diets significantly improved the overall cardiovascular risk profile. They did, con both diets contribute to a better uh, cardiovascular risk profile. That's true. Body, uh, the two diets were equally effective in, um, with respect to body mass index and body fat. The people in the study on both diets lost an average of about four pounds in body weight and three pounds of body fat. So both diets were effective in that regard. So far, so good. Both diets differed in their impact on some of the biochemical risk factors for cardiovascular disease, however. The people on the study, when they were eating the vegetarian diet, uh, uh, led to a significant reduction in LDL lipoprotein, low-density lipoprotein or the bad cholesterol. When they were eating the Mediterranean diet, they did better in reducing their triglycerides. <laughs> Nevertheless, the take-home message, Dr. Uh, Sophie says, is that a low-calorie lacto-ovo-vegetarian diet can help patients reduce cardiovascular risk about the same as a low-calorie Mediterranean diet, close quote. I can tell you what Dr. Esselstyn would say. Don't do neither. If you have coronary artery disease, he's going to tell you a whole food plant-based diet, no meat, no dairy, no oil. 
Go to his website. I went there again this morning, um, and he did a one. They did one study of his patients. Um, I was. I took a look at it, and I. What they found was when they were when they put these patients on a whole food, plant based diet, no meat, no dairy, no oil, and medication, they got their cholesterol below one hundred and fifty. Those patients reverse the coronary artery disease. Now they can't get they couldn't reverse the calcified plaque. But that soft fatty plaque, yes. And they and they they took themselves out of cardiovascular risk in great measure. But note cholesterol below one fifty. That's key. He says that over and over again. Now, that diet is, you may think it's impossible. A whole food, plant-based diet, no meat, no dairy, no oil. What am I eating, straw? <laughs> no, you're eating whole, there's plenty to eat. I don't miss the dairy one bit. Not one bit. And I don't miss the meat either. Now, the olive oil, that's a little tough for me. Um... I have a little bit now and again, but not so, drastically reduced, drastically. And once in a while, I'll sneak a little bit of feta cheese once in a blue moon. I like feta cheese on a salad. It is good on a salad. It is. I know. <laughs> so you, I cheat a little bit. If you go to his website, you'll see the article... A strategy to arrest and reverse coronary artery disease, a five-year longitudinal study of a single physician's practice, i.e. his. Now, this is, a, this is not some goofball out there wearing a tinfoil hat, aluminum hat, you know, in the thin ether. <laughs> That's not who Dr. Esselstyn, you like that description? Yes. Saying stupid, crazy things. This, he's a cardiac surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic. He's a serious man. He's got a sense of humor, but he's been doing this a long time, and he's had great success. It just depends. Like the man Gary saw in the in the convenience store, just got out of, just got out of the hospital had for the triple ban on his hand. Had the, had the band on his hand. He's buying two two pack two six packs of beer of six pack of beer and two packs of cigarettes yes. he just got released from the hospital I triple mean, bypass was on his hand what can i say he doesn't you know he would like to live longer but he wants his beer and his cigarettes too well you know what good luck with that <laughs> we'll be back
and welcome to the show. Great to be with you. Thanks for stopping by today. You are listening to Let's Talk Nutrition. We are coast to coast, including Hawaii, and we're global. And uh, we're, uh, you know, in, even in Hawaii. So the show does play at different times in different markets. And as they say, check your local listings. But it's always live, 9 to 11, round numbers, <laughs> Eastern Time, a.m., uh, every day, Monday through Friday. And uh, we're delighted to be here with you. Glad you could uh, tune us in. Everything is archived, uh, all the audio and video. Uh, the show does stream, so everything is it's all there. Not all the videos on the homepage. Some, the rest are on YouTube. There's a link that will escort you there without any difficulty. And uh, we invite you. Uh, Dr. Jason Mitchell is my guest in this portion of the show. Uh, doctor, I've known Dr. Mitchell quite a while now, and he's been a regular guest on the show. And it's always good to have him on. He has interesting things to talk about, and um, you'll see. And we invite you to join the conversation. We love it when you call. Even if you want to ask something that's off topic, I'm good with that. And um, it's okay. If you can take the time to listen or watch, we can take the time to talk to you. Um, so... I'm just saying, we, we like it, this is interactive, we like it to be interactive, well, dialogue is far more interesting than monologue. Oh yeah, you can reach us at 877-897-8255, that's 877-897-8255. We're one of the few people that actually take calls with guests online, so I think it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, we. this is why, this is why we show up. <laughs> uh, didn't show up here, I, I mean, it's so always about the audience. That's a guiding principle. It's always about the audience. I told my students that for years. It's always about the audience, never about you. Everything we do and say around here ultimately is, for, you know, somehow a form or fashion intended to uh, have an effect on the audience. Uh, earlier in the show, I was talking comparing vegetarian to Mediterranean for cardiovascular health. It turned out to be a draw, in a sense, both. I, but then I introduced Dr. Esselstyn into the conversation. He would say neither of those ways of eating are good for patients with cardiovascular disease. He would, he would endorse a whole food, plant-based diet, no meat, no dairy, no oil. Based on his several decades now of um, being a cardiac surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic, um, that's what he's come, come to conclude. And he got onto this because he got so frustrated with taking care of patients, performing bypass and this and that, and they would still die. And he said, there's got to be something else here. There's got to be another way. He still does surgery. And he's of the mind, if you keep cholesterol and the data, his data and others suggest that cholesterol below 150 that seems to be a variable that's very important. Now, there are other factors, but that one variable, 150 and below, they find that he can reverse. Now, he can't do anything about the calcified plaque, but he can reverse and prevent heart disease but with cholesterol below 150. That's what his data say. And if you go to his website, you'll see that one longitudinal study that they did on 22 patients of his over five, over five years and the results. Now, some of them ha were on medication too, so it was a combination. They were in serious trouble. Some of these patients were sent home to die. <laughs> okay, so I'm just saying. Well, it's the body. It, so the inside of the body heals like the outside, like if you have a cut, but if you keep on cutting it, it won't heal, right? Like with your arteries, if you keep damaging them, Right, the endothelium. Right, the body's going to keep trying to repair it, and you get pla at the placking starts to happen, and the artery becomes occluded. Right. Okay. Because it's being constantly damaged, like that guy you saw just got out of bypass surgery in the convenience store with the hospital band on his wrist, buying a pack of beer and two packs of cigarettes. I shouldn't laugh, but it's funny because it's like, what are you thinking? I just, I he's don't. Not, he's not. It's not even a matter of thinking. That trip to the convenience store is so ritualized in his life. That piece of behavior, you just, we just see it as a guy walking into a convenience store. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. 
And he that was he was just released that morning. Yes. He probably couldn't wait. Couldn't wait to get there. That's such an important part of his life. You have we had a caller earlier or somebody sent an email. Yeah. Wanted to know when do the side effects outweigh the benefits? In his mind, the side effects of drinking the beer and smoking his, his smokes, his two packs of cigarettes and his six pack of beer, those side effects are whatever those are, they are, but the benefits associated for him with that doing that far outweigh the side effects. The pleasure that brings him obviously, but he's habituated. His behavior, it's, he's probably been doing that, Gary, since he was a teen, if I had to guess. Did he have a, I won't even ask you what he was driving, or was he being driven? He was being driven. He okay. was being driven. But yeah. it's, it amazes me that we, everybody's got that chance to, to heal themselves, and we don't take it. Well, that's, you know, you got to respect that. I mean, that's his choice, and that's where it goes. Human nature, the nature of human nature is complicated. Mm -hmm. and, you can, and sometimes it's, it's very basic. These physicians don't have time for cognitive behavioral therapy in the office. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bob, you need to quit smoking and drinking or you're going to die. Okay, doc. Give me my blood pressure and cholesterol med prescriptions. And, and then they're noncompliant. Don't take the meds. My guess is Dr. <laughs> My guess is Dr. Jason Mitchell, um, and uh, Dr. Mitchell is, uh, has a nice company, Probulin, and um, they are now into uh, some skincare products that are pretty cool, and we'll get them to talk about that and as probiotic products. Dr. Mitchell, welcome back. Uh, what do you make of that fella? Just got out of out of the hospital, triple bypass. He's in the convenience store buying a six pack and two packs of cigarettes. Well, you know what's really funny is that I think um, <clears throat> I'm sorry for the noise. It's all right. Um, I, I think what's most interesting about that, and when you look at it, it, it begins to uh, beg the question whether or not this person is actively making the right decisions about the foods they eat. I mean, you know, there was that Princeton study that showed that corn syrup was more addicting than heroin. So we have to look to the food as a source of addiction and begin to treat it as if you're on an illicit drug or something of that nature, almost treat it with a 12-step program to actually stop the addiction to food. Because this person, obviously, triple bypass surgery, walks out, goes right into a convenience store, starts buying things that are obviously not going to be good for this person's health. <laughs> you have to ask the question, is he doing it because he actually wants to hurt himself intentionally, or is he truly addicted to food? And I believe that it's the latter. I believe that we truly, as a society, are addicted to the food. In fact, food engineers are creating foods knowing that certain things are addicting, such as the bliss point that was created with sugar. Mm. They know that at a certain percentage of sugar in food, they're adding it to breads and chips and all kinds of other things, ketchup, sauces, whatever. They know that if they add a certain percentage of sugar, corn syrup or other elements just like it, that it will elicit an addictive response and therefore they have a customer for life. And we have to start looking at food as an addiction, not necessarily just as bad choices. I think most people are making these choices not because they, they want to. I think because they don't really have a choice in their mind because they're truly addicted. It is a drug. I believe that sugar accounts for more death than the total worldwide war on drugs. I mean, I really do when you look at diabetes and heart disease and all the other complications that come alongside it. So that's my take. You know, I believe that people are truly addicted. Yeah, well, he, he's obviously, as like I said, he's so habituated to the beer and the smokes that, oh, well, uh, you wanted to, uh, we're going to, it turns out that probiotics get involved uh, on the inside and the outside, don't they? They absolutely do. You know, well, you know, we're, we're, we'll get in, so we'll get it, we'll get into that. And you're trying to take care of that. <laughs> absolutely. All right. We're going to get Dr. Jason Mitchell's my guest and, uh, We'll, we'll see what's on his mind. He's always got something on his mind. I know he's, he'll be at Expo West. That's next week. We'll get to see him there. But we have him here now, and uh, we'll see what he has to say. He always got something good to say.
Almost 52% of men experience erectile dysfunction and benign prostatic hyperplasia. If you've had challenges with virility, sexual health, or low energy, Body Vigor's Alpha Extension may be the answer for you. Body Vigor's Alpha Extension can help revitalize your alpha male and extend your love. Our formula is one of the highest quality nutraceuticals available, formulated to support the processes involved in promoting a healthy male sex drive, energy, and stamina. Alpha Extension has two powerful herbal blends, Virilla Max, which focuses on male sexual health, and T-Pump Activator, which helps balance your testosterone levels. Revitalize your alpha male with Body Vigor's Alpha Extension, exclusively available on Amazon.com. Dr. Jason Mitchell is our guest this uh, portion of the show. Dr. Mitchell, welcome back. Uh, what's at the top of your mind today? Well, you know, it's, it, it's kind of funny when I reached out to you and asked, you know, what, what do we want to talk about? I said, you know, it's interesting when you start talking about probiotics. So often we talk about digestive health almost exclusively, and that's internally, but not realizing, or I should say one of the newer, more emerging topics. In fact, last July in, the For- in Forbes magazine, they were... 
listing the top 10 trends in skincare, and they were talking how probiotic skin therapy is something of one of the top trends that are coming um, as far as what we can do to help support our skin as well. So you know what's interesting? When you start to look at things by sheer numbers, we're more bacteria than we are human cells. So it, it begs the argument and discussion of talking about how bacteria not only affects our insides, but also our outsides. And so how the, the community of inside-out type health and beauty is something really important. And so I look at skin as being the largest organ of the body as well. And you know it's a really important organ, and the better we care for it, um, the healthier we are, healthier we are as a as a person. So, so how I, do know, how I do pro combination how, topic. how do probiotics get implicated with the skin? Well, you know, some of the research right now is actually pretty profound. They're t- they're showing that even inactive bacteria, not even active bacteria, meaning they're not alive anymore, but inactive bacteria, they're known as what's called lysates. These inactive bacteria, when applied to the skin, have some really interesting responses. And the responses are it helps to engage um, a sense of skin renewal at a faster rate. It helps to engage the presence of antimicrobial peptides. These are these things that act very protectively, that help to give your skin ability to protect itself. It's been shown in research to give strength, or I should say, um, more support to the lipid barrier, that protective barrier of the skin. And it even shows to help just, you know, with moisturization, with um, protection and healing and so forth of the skin. It's actually quite amazing. You know, and I know that everybody is looking for this quest for youth. Somehow, some way, we want to find Mm. our path to looking younger, longer. Mm-hmm. And I'm personally of the opinion that I believe, you know, if you've got a wrinkle, you probably earned it. And so embrace it. But I think beauty can actually be something really special. And the healthier and the brighter that your skin can look and feel, I believe that as an image internally, we begin to take it and look and, and act healthier and brighter. And so I think the skin is really important to protect. You know, some of the research that we looked at, led us down the path that what is currently what we are in development for right now that'll be um we'll have samples of it at expo west i heard you say we're going to be at expo west but we certainly are um that we have in development right now something for blemishes and it's going to be the probulin probiotic um blemish therapy and it's really kind of unique what we did and it's a combination product it's really quite special um, but if you're at Expo West, um, come see us at 4763 because we'll be able to share it. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a booth number that uh, that Dr. Um, Mitchell was referring to, 4763. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to be there, God willing, and we'll stop by, of course. Um, Absolutely. And we're going to attend that other function, too. Um, oh, we can't wait. I'm, lo- I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're going to have you guys there. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. I There was a commercial... I don't know if you caught it. I don't remember the brand, so I can't even mention the brand because I don't remember what I, I it was. I caught it on the fly. It's a cosmetic company, and they they have probiotic. It's a probiotic cosmetic line that they are, were advertising. It was on cable TV. I don't know if you caught that commercial or not, but yeah. You know, I, I've I've seen several products that are attempting to head down the road of probiotics. And I, I find it very interesting that they'll put these beautiful ingredients in a product, but then they couple it with the combinations of things like parabens or glycols or phthalates or, you know, just all kinds of sulfates and other problematic ingredients that, quite honestly, just are, are, are things that we know scientifically are not necessarily healthy to put on our skin. And so... You know, when we see things like that, we want to make sure that we head down a much more natural road. In fact, all of our products are, all the uh, probulin probiotic skin therapy products are free of phthalates, glycols, um, sulfates, and parabens. And that's a really important thing to us, to make sure that what we put on our skin is equally as important as what we might want to consider putting in our bodies. Part of what actually contributes to some of the damage to our skin are sometimes the ingredients that are in these so-called skincare products. Mm-hmm. And so we try to be very, very careful at what we actually build our products with as well. I, I guess in a word, we got here, what well, we have are beauty bugs, <laughs> so to yeah, speak. Yeah, I guess you could say that's kind of a cool tagline. I like that. I'm going to footnote you. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and that's what we got going on here. And so when you, in, your, in this uh, Probulin cosmetic line, a uh, skincare line, 
do you have are there pro and i've used i've used everything but the eye cream because i i couldn't get it but um right. are probiotics in all of the products Yes, we actually do. Now, now, to be fair, our cleanser contains the least amount of the, pro, the, um, the probiotics. And the reason for that is, is that the cleanser, at the end of the day, it's a cleanser. Right. It, it's a quality soap that is designed to clean off the day, but yet not strip the valuable oils from the skin. So our, our, our probiotic skin therapy cleansing gel absolutely lives up to that. But we put just enough of the probiotics in there to give a little bit of support to the skin. But more importantly, it's there as a presence of the entire line. Um, but it's not meant to be probiotics as the active ingredient in that particular formula. But the it. rest of the line absolutely does contain therapeutic levels of these probiotics. And they're very important. And mind you, the probiotics we're using are backed by and validated by scientific research. Both okay, human that, and in vitro. And that's where I want to go. Exactly. You know, yeah. which pro, which strains are we talking about? And is there some crossover from the gut to the to the to using these bugs topically? You are listening to Dr. Jason Mitchell, uh, Probulin, Probulin.com. Visit the website, and uh, you know this this interesting connection. You got these um, microorganisms in your in your digestive tract but they can all they're on your skin as well and can be used in a way to you know help with aging this is great good stuff Women who are pregnant or planning to have a child have specific nutritional needs. Maintaining optimal nutritional intake is important for mother and baby. Body Vigor's preferred prenatal can help mother and baby receive the appropriate building blocks for growth, development, and healthy function. The preferred prenatal formula provides essential vitamins and minerals along with added support ingredients such as folic acid and DHA. Preferred prenatal also incorporates a bonus herbal blend to help the mom-to-be with the uncomfortable side effects of pregnancy like nausea, vomiting, mood swings, and uterine health. Support a healthy pregnancy for you and your baby with Preferred Prenatal, exclusively on Amazon.com.
I suspect that a lot of people listening and watching the show are very familiar with probiotics and make the association between probiotics and their digestive health. And that obviously. But maybe there's um, maybe not as many that would make some draw some correlation between probiotics and your skin and perhaps aging a little better. Welcome back to Let's Talk Nutrition. And my guest today, of course, Dr. Jason Mitchell from Probulin. And we're talking about probiotics uh, for the skin. You know, the, I guess in the word we can call them beauty bugs if you want to. Um, and um, I, was, uh, I was looking at um, this one study. It was published in the Journal of Drugs in Dermatology. Now, I know we don't... <laughs> You're saying, well, you're not talking about drugs. Probiotics aren't drugs. I, I understand, but that's where the study was published. And they found a number of beneficial effects from probiotics being applied topically to the skin. Restoring acidic skin pH, alleviating oxidative stress, uh, lessening photoaging, you know, from damage from the UV rays, improving the skin barrier function, enhancing, um, you know, just the quality of the skin. And so this area is not without its research. Dr. Mitchell, welcome back. What kind of, what kind of bacteria exactly are we talking about now? Well, let's put it this way. There, um, there are several different uh, bacterial species or strains that are actually being looked at. And so uh, to say that there's any one specific one, the more they research others they're finding that there's even more contribution that others can can have so i I would believe that we're going to find out much like the the inside of our digestive system is supported by a wide diversity you're going to find something similar to be true about the skin but what they're finding are um, certain strains of bifidobacterium and so forth but in our case it was a lactococcus ferment lysate and it was a really unique ferment um, that is a collection of bacteria and it's a and it's a lysate, as I said. They're inactive bacteria. And the research was done, like I said, on, um, you know, profoundly in, in vitro research to give indications of whether or not it was worth studying. And then further into human research, which showed just absolutely amazing results. But it is the bacteria used in all of the probulin skin therapy products are lactococcus ferment lysate. So it's very, very special, actually. This research, I would say, has come on in the last, Two to three years, I think, is where most people are starting to pay a great deal of attention there. Um, and it's quite amazing, actually. Some of the research is just spectacular. Well, uh, okay. Uh, um, I'm back up a little bit. That You said that lysate, meaning that, the, the, that it, they're inactive? Is that what that means? Yes, they are. They're inactive bacteria. Here's the challenge, right? With skin care products, they are in a liquid medium. They're liquid. And these skincare products, when you apply bacteria to a liquid medium, two challenges come into play. One, legally, you have to deliver a product that is stable from bacteria having an ability to grow, which means if you take a lotion or a serum or some sort of cream and you try to apply it to the skin, if there isn't some sort of preservation system that prevents pathogenic organisms from growing inside of such products, you know, you could actually be doing harm to the individual taking it. And so that makes it very difficult for all forms of bacteria, good or bad, to survive. Even if you're using an all-natural preservation system, such as what what we try to do with our products. Now, that being said, though, it is a long-standing research to show that even inactive bacteria elicit amazing benefits. The, the presence of their DNA, the presence of the structure of the cells themselves, the presence of the fragments, the cell wall fragments of these bacteria have a direct correlated response, not only internally, like immune health and so on, regularity and so on, but also topically, the skin responds to their presence. And it's actually quite amazing. Mm-hmm. I, was, I went on to PubMed, I was looking at some of the research, like the health effects of probiotics on the skin, and they were talking yeah. about probiotic bacteriotherapy, where they're using the probiotics to treat certain skin diseases, among which would be yeah. eczema, atopic dermatitis, acne, allergic inflammation, uh, or, or uh, skin hypersensitivity, UV, uh, induced skin sure. damage, and so on. Uh, this is pretty remarkable stuff. It really is. And if you, and if you read into that research, 
most of that research is even being done on 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 you know single strain and multi strain it's really quite amazing hmm. you know one of the research studies that we had that i thought was the most important for me you know and, and, and as far as that gave me the confidence that we're on a really an amazing path here you know when we launched our product last july I hoped I was on the right path, but then, of course, correlated directly with our launch was that release of the article from Forbes magazine that said probiotics are going to be the number two trend for the upcoming year for skincare. So it made me feel that, okay, so I think I'm right, I'm on the right path here. But one of the research studies um, that we saw was a study using this bacteria to show that it increases the presence of antimicrobial peptides in the skin. And the two that they specifically were focused on, now this may sound technical and everything, but it really just boils down to that when applying the probiotics to the skin, the skin has a better ability to defend itself and protect itself. Mm -hmm. And by protecting itself, it means from outside damage, from harm, that can lead to things like, you know, minor infections, blemishes, wrinkles, inflammation, things of that nature. And, And these are all things that are very important. It showed in the research to have... Um, uh, to, uh, excuse me, support the increase of very specific antimicrobial peptides, such as LL37 and beta defensin 1, they were showing increases of up to 190% and up to 150%. Hmm. And so it was actually quite special, and it was very, inc- I mean, uh, overwhelmingly statistically significant that when you apply this to skin, that the actual bacteria presence causes the skin to want to protect itself. It's absolutely amazing hmm. um, when, when you look at some of the research. Uh, are they and using that study? Are they yeah, u- uh, are they using in the discourse? Do you find them saying things like "you age better"? Um, it oh. contributes to beauty. I mean, uh, do they start to use that kind of language when they when they start to move it out of the lab or the scientific realm into the more yes. commercial realm? Well, absolutely. You know, one of the studies that they did also, which was done on humans as well. This was a human-based study where they applied it, they, they, they took, and they did it on the inside of the forearm um, for individuals because they wanted to be able to have, I mean, doing it on someone, you know, doing it on the face and so forth, and, and they were showing that it was equal skin, right? The same person on both of the inside of both forearms. One, they would apply this, the probiotic technology, and the other one, they wouldn't. And what they found was that the speed of skin renewal this process called desquamation, your body goes through this natural renewing process mm-hmm. on a constant basis. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's building new <laughs> skin cells down deep in the skin, and as, it, as the new skin cells reach the surface through the natural shedding process that we constantly do, these new, more beautiful skin cells get, um, get to the surface. Well, a process that would normally take as long as 28 days, was they were seeing results of this same healing process or this renewal process only taking four days. And so it was really quite spectacular that the speed of skin renewal, the ability for skin to cycle quicker and emerge this new beautiful skin, was happening faster. And that's all good. We'll be back with the L10 Health Question. As a fam- Almost 52% of men experience erectile dysfunction and benign prostatic hyperplasia. If you've had challenges with virility, sexual health, or low energy, Body Vigors Alpha Extension may be the answer for you. Body Vigors Alpha Extension can help revitalize your alpha male and extend your love. Our formula is one of the highest quality nutraceuticals available, formulated to support the processes involved in promoting a healthy male sex drive, energy, and stamina. Alpha Extension has two powerful herbal blends, Virilla Max, which focuses on male sexual health, and T-Pump Activator, which helps balance your testosterone levels. Revitalize your alpha male with Body Vigor's Alpha Extension, exclusively available on Amazon.com.
Okay. So um, here's the um, LTN health question of the day. Talking with Dr. Jason Mitchell and talking about probiotics but occupying a different uh, space on your body. How about your skin? This is very interesting. And uh, this is this is now making its way. It, it, it's in the realm of science for sure, but it's making its way into the commercial realm as well. And you got uh, companies such as Probulin, for example, on the cutting edge here, putting probiotics in their skincare product products to make the products more effective. <laughs> you can't make it up. Here's the question. Which of the following does the research show, um, how can I put this? Uh, which of the following does the research indicate probiotics can confer, uh, confer this benefit? Which, which of the following are benefit associated with probiotics on the skin? Let me put it that way. A, that using probiotics in these cosmetic products will restore acidic skin pH. B, alleviate oxidative stress. C, lessen the damage due to UV rays, you know, the sun, sun damage, or all three. Hmm. Which of the following is attributed uh, to probiotics being applied to the skin, improving or restoring acidic skin pH, alleviating oxidative stress, lessening photo aging caused by UV rays, or all of the above? I'll give you a hint. These probiotics can do a lot of different things on the skin. Here's the number to call. 877-897-8255. 877-897-8255. Or anywhere to sound my voice at 813-636-8255. Dr. Mitchell, um, just thinking about this, uh, like with sun damage or, or with burn patients, uh, they always worry about infection. I wonder if yeah. using these probiotics on the skin would be helpful in that arena. In well, you know, I can't. There's uh, there's no research that I know of where, or at least that I have in my possession, that shows that burn patients. You know, I mean, that's a pretty severe circumstance. Although I'm I'm certain that at some point they're going to you you know they'll end up using probiotics at certain times during the recovery of such things, but. Because the, the research is so strong at improving the presence of these protective antimicrobial peptides, the things that help to give protection back to the skin. And so I, I have no I doubt thought, in my mind and my heart that that'll happen. Yeah, but, I was thinking about inflammation. I, there is some yeah. research to show that it will uh, lessen photo aging caused by the sun's, sun damage. So uh, uh, taking it a little further, extrapolating it out a little further, thinking, you know, wonder if somebody gets with skin, uh, uh, skin burn patients, um, if they're using the probiotics to lessen infection. Uh, just a thought. It wouldn't surprise me that they're already doing it. It's just that it's probably <clears throat> not in the public domain now. It's more yeah. experimental at this time, yeah. I would imagine, but I, would, I can't imagine that they're not. You know, there was one thing before we went to the break that I, I, I really like to point out. Sure. There's, there's certain words that I purposely avoid using, and that's the words anti and aging. And I'll tell you, and the reason why I do it is I think it's an overpromise and underdeliver setup because we're all aging. There's no question about it. You can't stop it. So there's no anti-aging reality. You know what I believe is I believe that if we take care of ourselves, both internally and externally, that we can age more gracefully. And that's really the aim and goal of what um, Probulin's probiotic skin therapy is about, is to just support the skin in such a way so that we can age more gracefully, that the things we're exposed to, the challenges that we face, especially with our skin, mm -hmm. that our skin can be nourished, supported, and protected in such a way that we seal in that moisture and help to make skin brighter and healthier looking. Because at the end of the day, people just want to look good. They want to feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's what our products are aimed to do. Well, stay away from the words anti-aging. Well, I it's do. funny. I, you know, funny you should. Beautiful. Funny you should say that because yesterday, and we have the we, we have the tape to prove it. I was talking about that, and I was I referenced Leonard Hayflick, Doctor mm -hmm. Hayflick, who is a renowned uh, researcher in the world of aging, and he has he wrote an article, and the the title of the article is "Anti-Aging is an Oxymoron." 
<laughs> That's the title of the article. And uh, he is he, he doesn't like that term either, by the way. So you're in good company, Dr. Mitchell. Let's go to Lance. Well, you know, aging gracefully, I think, is such an important thing. And the more gracefully that we can age, the better quality of life that we have and the better that we feel about ourselves. And it gives us confidence. It gives us, a, yeah. I don't know, a pep in our step when we can actually just age more gracefully and more comfortably. So that's what we aim to do, inside and out. There you go. Let's go to Lansdale, Pennsylvania. They're aging up there, too. Uh, Betty, <laughs> Betty, how are you doing today? Welcome to the show. Thanks for calling. Hi, I'm doing fine. Thank so, you. So what? Uh, so far, what do we know? Is it Which of the following uh, will probiotics help achieve? A, restore acidic skin pH. B, alleviate oxidative stress. C, lessen photo aging, photo aging caused by UV rays or all of the above. All the above. And then some. Um, this is The research here is kind of interesting. Uh, in, in terms of the world of science and research, this is, sort, this is new, so to speak. New. Uh, it's been around a while. I mean, there are some studies out there. Um, but it's not uh, as uh, robust as we know with respect to probiotics in the gut. I suspect, though, within a few years that will catch up and there will be a, an abundance of research. Probulin is on the cutting edge here, Dr. Mitchell's company. Uh, go to probulin.com. You can learn more about that line. And, of course, their standard, uh, well-known and well-received, popular uh, probulin for the gut. Right, Dr. Mitchell? Absolutely. You know, Probulin's been trying to focus on helping to advance science related to probiotics and helping them have a greater effect of, pos- of a positive nature for all those that use them, and that's our focus and our goal. So you we can know how valuable they are, and we just want to make them more valuable. So you can use uh, Betty and everybody else listening and watching can use Probulin for the inside and for the outside. Uh, I use their skincare line too, by the way. It's great. Uh, thank you, Betty, for calling. Congratulations on winning a twenty-five dollars supplement gift card to Vitamin Discount Center. We appreciate your listenership. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow. We'll do this again. You know, repetition, repetition. <laughs> we'll do it till we get it right. No. We love doing it. Uh, thank you for tuning in today, for listening and watching, wherever and however, and wherever you may be. We, we're grateful. We don't take you for granted. And Dr. Mitchell, we don't take you for granted either. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in California. Your health is your wealth. <laughs>